Hello again. This is the third installment of the uh, set of videos on the Elmer Finite Element Workflow for 2D uh, Magneto, uh, Magnetodynamics or Magnetostatics. It's actually Magnetostatics at the moment, but Dynamics will come later. And this video we'll talk about meshing, um, and I may roll into it the Elmer GUI uh, problem setup as well. Uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, so I'm joined by uh, our customer facing bear, this one here. This bear looks after the customers, takes their requirements, distills them into project plans, liaises with the project manager. <laughs> Doesn't really, it's just a bear. My son actually picks him up by his tail. It's very embarrassing. Right, so um, if you've been following the other the other two videos, then you'll know that we are at the point where the geometry is put together and we are uh, ready to mesh. Uh, if you watched the last video, actually, you'll see I, I meshed it quickly just to make sure that I hadn't made any mistakes in the geometry setup. Um, if you haven't seen those, then it might not be a bad idea to go back and have a look see what's what. Um, otherwise let's get to it. So you may remember we were dealing with this uh, C-core inductor which we're going to impress some current density on some uh, coils except they're not really coils for the reasons that I mentioned in other videos. It's just a box with a, a current density flowing into and out of the page and this is a uh, the core, uh, ferro core which is going to be notionally made of N87. Um, and air surrounds everything. Um, and if we look in Salome, in uh, geometry, we have our uh, final problem, which is the partition set of that with the groups added accordingly so that we can select the um, various bits that we might need to select uh, as a part of the, uh, uh, the problem set up in our GUI. So we can move into the mesh part of Salome and we can, so you probably won't see this, but this is here because I quickly tested it before. We do mesh, create a mesh, uh, it doesn't really matter what we call it, so let's call it mesh one. The geometry will be the, the partition problem. If you if you do the individual bits, then the mesh doesn't work properly. This is a 2D problem. The algorithm we will use, um, so somebody has got quite a lot of them built in. We will use NetGen 2D. Uh, if you want to know where it comes from, you don't have to download it. It comes already built into your uh, ship with uh, Salome, but if you wanted it, this is where it comes from. Um, there is another finite element software called um, ng something netgen ng solve net this one um, I haven't quite worked out if they're related or not so when I said the main competitor was open foam uh, it's not the only competitor although are they even competing it's very hard to say um, I guess they would say they're not competing um, in any case if you if you don't like the look of Alma and you don't like the look of open foam, uh, you could try this one. But that's by the by. So NetGen is actually a, a separate thing. It just is, is shipped within Salome, much like um, Paraview is. So NetGen 2D hypothesis. We can look at some settings, and we can set the maximum size and minimum size, and you can adjust the growth rate and that sort of thing if you wanted to. Um, that's a little bit too coarse, I think maybe we will do fine, and maybe I'll make that a five. Maybe make that one. See how that looks. It's not the, uh, what I could do actually is rename that to something a bit more useful. Um, if you want to know about this, the details of this, then um, if you go into the Salome help, um, you can look at it alternatively if you fire up search engine and look at the documentation online you can see what the various things do but if you're used to 
Uh, Ansys Comsol, Flux, and the rest of them, Vector Field. Um, the idea of setting the mesh sizes and having a free tetrahedral mesh and all the other stuff is not going to be news to you. If it is, then I um, guess you've got a bit to learn about meshing. So we'll apply that. Um, and we have now algorithm and hypothesis. And we have mesh one, and it's got a little triangle by it, which says, um, so I'm just checking the sound is going. I've got problems with the sound lately. Um, there's a little uh, yellow triangle that says, um, I don't know what's going on here. So we will compute the mesh. Really? 24? That doesn't seem good. Something's gone wrong there. That's the geometry now. Okay. Right. Hmm. Let's edit this mesh, find out what's gone wrong here. Mesh type any. Geometry. It's an obvious mistake. Name mesh one geometry. That's the geometry. Let's have another go at that. Not sure what I did wrong there. It appears to have meshed the nodes rather than um, anything else. Mesh, mesh one, geometry, geometry, that one, mesh type. Quite happy if to take any. Just leave it on that for now, see how we go. That's better. Ah, well, I'm pretty sure I didn't do anything differently there, but hey ho. So it, it's meshed it and the, some of the, the little bit big. Um, not going to be a very accurate result. <laughs> Compute nice and fast though. <laughs> let's, um, let's edit the, uh, the um, just before we edit actually, I turn off the axis because it's annoying. If we look at groups of edges and groups of faces, you can see that the mesh is composed of groups. That's the air group. Coil, coil, and a, a bounding box edge. That's significant because I need those, um, and so do you, in Elma GUI to be able to add materials and body forces and to set which equations are being used to do the calculations in those uh, domains or regions. So, if we didn't do all this stuff up here with the creating of groups, we wouldn't get mesh groups here. Um, there are some videos that are on YouTube, and also there's a PDF knocking about, which demonstrates some aspects of this process, where you have to make the mesh groups at this point yourself, based on these groups. As it is... Uh, Salaman now appears to make them for you, provided you've done this bit first. So it's a bit easier than it used to be. Let's just edit this mesh and try and make it slightly finer. So we'll call it, um, I'll leave it at that, doesn't matter. Five, half, firmness, don't know, I've set the value so you can say. So now it's saying you've made changes. You need to recompute the mass. Uh, there are a lot more elements, obviously. That's a bit better. It might even be a little bit fine. So here it's, it's obviously squidging to get in this, this gap. But if we look here, it's still very large. This is quite problematic because we know, well, hopefully we know, um, 
that especially around this bit here and around this bit here is going to be all the fringing fields uh, where the flux leaks out of the or leaks. Some flux makes it from this part of the core to this part of the core going straight across and other bits bugger off. Um, that's a technical term. If we were serious about this, we would probably make a special region here or a special region that's sort of like a dumbbell shape. Um, and we, at this point, we'd have air and then we'd have like uh, air around the gap as a thing. And we would do a mesh refinement on it to make quite a fine mesh there so we can refine the, the calculation of the leaking flux. Uh, but this is just, um, I was going to say a bit of fun, but it's a bit of an odd thing to do for fun. I don't know, odd bear. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's not the best, but we are only doing the workflow. It doesn't really matter. If you want to go and make it better, by all means, help yourself. So we have a mesh. Hooray! That was easy. And a right click, export, UNV file, and we will call it a video conduct. Uh, it's a UMB, so we know it's a mesh. Video inductor. Save. Great. So, for the moment, we are done with Salome, and we're going to come back to it when we need to process the post process the result. So, we'd fire up uh, Elmer. No, we won't. Elmer mesh. So, for UMV files, we need. going to point with my finger there. I'm not learning, am I? Elmer grid, which converts from the universal mesh to the Elmer's internal mesh structure. 8 and 2. Um, we need the Elmer grid manual. I can't remember what which one is the 8 and which one is the 2. One is to do with the input type and one is to do with something else. You'll have to go and look it up. Let's see if we can find the Elmer grid manual. Hang on. Uh, whoops. It's a Molex of some kind. Oh, we're off to find L now. Elmer grid. Wonder what I wanted that for. 127 days? Jesus Christ. Right, well, that's not going to be around, is it? It's unfortunate. Hopefully, I don't need that anytime soon. Um, Elmer grid manual. Ah, uh, bum 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 be nice to find the official the official I think I have to download it as a zip let's pull it from here we'll see what the date on it is April 30th 2009 that is a touch out date um, we can maybe go and look in my downloads oh my documentation oh my documentation you can pull this from here. If you click that, that's the zip you end up looking at. Now we're grid. Um, right. Bit of 30th October 2015. Okay, so they haven't changed it for quite a while um, by the standards of the, the rate of development they usually have. So, usage. Okay, so programs two operation modes. Command file mode, which is the command name, I only use the argument. Uh, inline mode, which expects at least three input parameters. Elmer grid one three, and then test, which is the the name of the name of the you know, the the file that you intend to convert. First parameter defines the input file format, so that's two uh, eight in our case, which is UNV. And the second one for us is 2, which is dot .mesh, which is the Elmer sol um, uh, solver format. Um, so that's what it's going to be outputting. And then the third is just the name of the file that we want to the UMV file. And then we have the word auto clean on the end, which is this performs the united action of the four above. The four above. 
Remove boundaries that are two ranks lower than the highest dimension. Remove nodes that are not used in any element. Renumber the materials from ones that every number is used. Renumber boundary types from ones that every number is used. So it tidies up effectively. So that's what we're going to run. Uh, Elmer Grid 82, that's the UMV I just exported. Auto clean, go. And it says, starting, output we save to user jankering video inductor. So there's going to be a directory that results from the running of this program. And that directory will contain the mesh that we will import to Elmer GUI. It reads it and it allocates and it knows the names of the various bits. Um, although it appears to only know the first, so I put a space in for coil outer and coil inner, it doesn't seem to carry the space, so maybe you don't want to carry the space uh, in your when you're typing in names. Um, and then it tells us what it's going to do and if it's happy. If it's unhappy, it will let you know. The important thing is um, that it ended without an error. Uh, if it ends with an error, then you have to go and work out what the error means and figure out what's gone wrong. So that's effectively it there. Next thing we want to do is fire up um, Elmer GUI. And this is what it looks like when you start. So the first thing we can do is the mesh. And this is expecting a directory. Um, and it's video inductor select folder and there it is so that's our thing and it's one of the, the curiosities of of Elmer and open phone if you like open phone I don't know very much about it but in open phone you would need to have a 3d mesh and it would be one unit deep so it would be 2d but one unit deep so each having only one that instead of being a triangle it would be um, a tetrahedron just extruded downwards um, whereas Elma actually has it totally flat so it's a little bit different um, not that it makes much much difference overall so what do we need to do now we need to set up the materials, we need to set up the equations, we need to set up the um, stimulus, which we call the body force, we need to set up the boundary conditions on the outside or any other in internal, but it's only outside here, and um, we need to set up the initial conditions, which actually there are no initial conditions. The initial conditions are that there's no magnetic vector potential at the, the start of the simulation. So, how long have we been going for? We've been going for, where does it tell me that? 18 minutes and 5 seconds. And I've got two angry bears behind me. Hmm. I think perhaps we'll stop there. And I'll put this into another video. So next video will be how to set up the uh, equations, the materials, the uh, stimulus and so on and so forth. So what I'll do now is I will save this project. Uh, and I'll save it in the same directory as the mesh stuff. Um, so, select file. so the project will live there. It was asking me for a directory at that point. Uh, and I'll save that again. Right, so I'll see you in the next one.